Amen. So Luke chapter 14, while we are there, I want to focus on verses, sorry, 18, 18 to 20. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And others said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Now what we see here, what do we see here? There's people who are making excuses to hear the gospel, to receive the gift of salvation. There's a soul winner here. The servant represents a soul winner. He's gone out among the people. He's trying to bring people. He's trying to get people saved and people are giving excuses. Sorry, I have no time. I have to go. I'm Catholic, you know, so stuff like that. But what I want to fo focus today is there are a lot of parallels between getting saved and telling someone the gospel. Like for example, <clears throat> very few people get saved and there are very few Christians who go soul winning, right? Satan doesn't want people to get saved. So he brings a kind of blindness. He brings false teaching so that people don't get saved. Not only that, but he also brings a lot of false teaching among saved people so that they don't go soul winning, right? He doesn't want you to go and win people for the Lord, right? And I'm going to read this verse from Exodus chapter 4. You don't have to turn there. God is appearing to Moses at the burning bush and says, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Further, in verse 10, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of slow tongue. Here we see Moses giving excuses not to do the work of the Lord. God is telling him to go deliver his people and he's coming up with his excuses, right? So that is, that is a parallel that I want to draw. There are people who will make excuses to get saved and you'll also find people who make excuses not to go soul winning. So the title of the sermon today, Soul Winning Excuses Germans Give. Okay, Soul Winning Excuses Germans Give. Now, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people who are not Germans would give the same excuses, okay? The reason why I've uh, titled it so is because I've been predominantly soul winning in Germany, mostly except with the exception for last week when I was in Switzerland, but mostly I've been dealing with Germans, trying to get Germans to go soul winning. So these are all the excuses that I've seen from the Germans, okay? Now obviously Indians also make excuses. Now, one of the very common excuse why people from India could make an excuse is, oh, I don't want to go soul winning because of the persecution. In India, you might be beaten. I don't want to be beaten. I don't want the people to throw stones at me. I don't want people to come and burn down my house. But the thing is, of course, if you're in India or if you have Indian friends who are telling you this, there are always places in India where you can go soul winning. There are so many Catholic regions People won't persecute you for telling the gospel. There's so many Christians who are trusting in their works. You know, I would, if you're afraid of persecution, there's still a lot of field for you to go and win souls. Okay? Let's, uh, let's, let's understand the Germans a little bit. Okay? What I've seen, I've been in Germany for the past seven years. And there's certain things that I've observed about the Germans, things I like, things probably I'm not really a fan of. I really like the fact that Germans are punctual. Okay, coming from an Indian, most of the time, yeah, sometimes, except for Deutsche Bahn, right? Uh, <clears throat> the thing is, I used to be punctual back in India as well, but the problem is when you're punctual in India, people hate you. Yeah, and I, I, I worked as a lecturer in a university, and the students hated me because I was being punctual. I like the fact that Germans work hard. They work effective. They work eight hours a day, effective. They focus and they don't try to steal time from their boss. And that's something that's a really good quality that I like, that I appreciate. That's a very Christian quality, okay? This is something that's rarely found in India. People are always being lazy. They want to do as minimum work as possible. I'm pretty sure there are exceptions in Germany. One thing I like about the Germans is Germans are not into small talk. You know, whenever you strike a conversation with Germans, oh, it'll go. 
you'll go, you have to take a pause. Uh, and that's something that you can use for soul winning. You know, when you come across, sometimes people are willing to spend that time. You know, uh, of course there are people who come up, uh, who don't have time, but most of the time when you get somebody saved, they, they have a lot of time, they're willing to have a conversation. And one thing that I really appreciate about Germans is the, that they have a right attitude when it comes to gift giving. I really like that. You know, Germans, um, in India, sometimes they don't know what to buy, what, what to gift a friend for a birthday, we just give them money and say, buy whatever you want. And that is offensive in Germany to do that. You have to think about it, you have to really spend that, um, <clears throat> what does a person like, sometimes customize your gift, right? And one thing, they really understand the concept of gift. A gift is something that you don't uh, uh, earn. And once you give a gift, you don't turn, return it back. That's something that I haven't seen much in India. In India, people ask for gifts back when they, when they get, a, get into fight with you. Am I, am I wrong? Yeah, and sometimes people return gifts. And, oh, I don't like you anymore. I don't want what you, what you gave me, you know? And I, 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 to be honest, I've been in such situations as well. You know, and then I've come to Germany. Uh, I tried to pull this out on one of my German friends. I was like, I don't I know what, uh, I want to return this gift, it's too much. But no, it's yours. If you don't want it, throw it away. I mean, I don't want it back. I mean, wow, that, that's a really good <laughs> idea, this good, that the Germans have. Okay, so you must be thinking, oh, that is normal for us. Yeah, but for me, it's some good <clears throat> things I don't like about German. Or the German culture. Alcohol. You know, German culture, it's a nation of drunkards, wine bibblers. You know, in India, alcohol is a taboo. Although there are people who drink, people do it in secret, and it's not something that a lot of people are non-alcoholic. There are dry days, there are dry states where you don't find alcohol, at least not legally. And I've, I've been raised in a family where my parents were absolutely non-alcoholic. No drinking, absolutely no go. They would even like tell me to stay away from people who drink. But the thing is later on in my life, I got into wrong company, wrong friends, and I kind of occasionally used to drink. But thank God I never developed a problem with alcohol. And thanks to all the NIFB preaching, I was able to prove from the Bible that yes, the Bible does not encourage consumption of alcohol. Jesus never drank alcohol, but Germans, especially the Christians, I, this church where I go to, where I used to go to, the Brethren Church, when there's a wedding, when there's an anniversary, there's a beer, a wine in church. A bunch of wine biblers, these are elders, pastors who preach. You know, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that they're necessarily drunkards as such. But isn't that a bad example that they said? Amen. That, oh, we don't, drink, we don't drink much, but yeah, it's, there's nothing wrong in drinking alcohol. But what about the people who are struggle, struggling with alcohol in their church? <clears throat> Feminism is a huge problem in Germany. Not only that, it's the effem effeminization of men. Me and Anselm were, um, Brother Anselm were talking about it on the way here. You know, there are a lot of men who just can't make decisions. In the churches, they're like, um, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe, or maybe let's, let's ask this person, let's ask that person, let's see what they have to say, let's see what they have to say. They can't make a point and say, this is what we're going to do. But you don't find that in German men, a bunch of women. And you know what happens as a result? The women take uh, the role and everybody is uh, unhappy at the end. Germans are crazy about political correctness. You don't talk about hate, you don't talk about faggot and all these words. You know? No hate, absolutely no hate. And if I tell them, uh, okay, do you love Hitler? They, 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 they don't even want to answer that sometimes. <laughs> they don't even want to answer that. Hey, okay, okay, we should not love him. Do you love Hitler? Um, uh, they try to, they don't want to use the word hate for anything. And one thing that I've seen is that sometimes uh, there they, they could be exceptions, especially in churches, they will follow the leaders, they will follow the pastor or whoever is in charge of them, even if it's dead wrong. Even if they're dead wrong, don't question the authority. Let's just follow him. 
And even if he's doing some big sin, some great, let's, let's, let's not talk about it. Let's just keep it a secret. Now, I, I, um, when I uh, started listening to Pastor Anderson, when I started getting familiar with the NIFB doctrines, and when I started reading the Bible for myself, and I started going soul winning, I was part of this church, the Brethren Church. And uh, how many of you have been to Brethren Churches? Right, okay. They usually have two parts in their services, right? The first part is like a communion service, like where they, some, uh, in this church where I used to go to, there are people who would come forward and share a testimony. They will say what happened during the week. And then the second part is more like the Gottesdienst part, right? So I took, took use of that opportunity. I said, you know what, I'm going to go up and I'm going to talk about soul winning. I want to talk about the experiences that I had. Hey, I got this person saved. You know, hey, we should go soul winning because it works. I was surprised that it works. People were getting saved. Wow, this is amazing. You know, I want to um, motivate my friends to go soul winning as well. And I used to go and uh, tell some verses from the Bible. And very, very, very few people were like, oh, that was really interesting, man. That was really interesting. And I went around asking a lot of my German friends, hey, would you like to go soul winning with me? Hey, would you like to go soul winning with me? The number one excuse, it is not my gift. Come on, it's true. It is not my gift. It's not my thing. I'll tell you this one example, okay? This, there is this pastor of this church, okay? I'll name that pastor, his name is Philip Buskamp. And he's one of the most rotten persons I've ever met. Arrogant prideful and he was a pastor of this church and I asked him once hey pastor can we go soul winning together we can tell people the gospel he said no I don't talk to strangers it's not my it's not my thing I don't talk to people on the street and tell them the gospel it's not <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> and one fine day I uh, the, the Sunday the opportunity was given I went forward and said the harvest is plenty but the laborers are few I read that verse from the Bible. And another time I read the verse where I said, if you, Jesus said, if you do not gather with me, you scatter it abroad. Amen. And immediately when I went and took my seat, this pastor came forward and said, Moses, you're wrong. I want to clarify that. Yeah. And he, and he told the people, it's not everybody's gift. You don't have to go soul winning. Don't, don't, don't do this. You know, and, the, and the, another excuse that is connected with this is, it's not my gift. I don't do it the way you do it. Don't expect us to go soul winning, do soul winning the way you do it. And he, and he showed this verse. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers and he said see not everybody is a soul winner only some people are soul winners but does it actually use the word soul winner here of course not you know it's 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 talking about evangelists and then if you read the bible look at the very first verse Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called do you know the word vocation vocation is basically a job it's, it's, a, it's like a career so being an evangelist is a, is a full time job you're sent out as an evangelist you know you don't do anything else you know, you're, you, of course, you're doing soul winning, but you're doing a lot of, you're also planting a church, you're trying to get people together. And of course, when the pastor who sent you sees fit that you're able to lead a church, he will ordain you as a pastor one day once you meet the qualifications. That's how at least the pastors of the churches in the NIFB movement do it, right? So soul winning is something that every Christian should do, right? And we see that throughout the Bible. Go and preach in the, uh, the world, and that if you, for example, if you look, look at the word utterance, just look it up, you'll find so many times uh, repeated in the book of Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. It's basically um, the Holy Spirit is giving us the capacity, filling us with the power to tell someone the gospel. Okay, to open your Bible 
and tell somebody to get saved is not a gift. That's something that we all can do and that we all should do. Amen. As a saved Christian, yes. <clears throat> the problem is, a lot of Christians who get saved who don't want to go soul winning, generally, a lot of people, they want to serve the Lord. I want to do something for the Lord. You know, I hardly come across Christians who say, I want to do nothing for the Lord. But the thing is, as I said, we don't want to do it the way you do it. They try to get creative. They try to come up with new rules. The thing is, there are certain things that you don't reinvent in the Bible. Some things have been um, set that we just follow. You don't reinvent how you do prayer or something like that. You don't reinvent how I read my Bible. You know, there are certain things that you just don't reinvent. You don't reinvent how do you get saved. Right? See, the thing is, people want to stay in a comfort zone. A lot of them. They don't want to, I want to be in my comfort zone. I want to do what I like. I want to do what makes me comfortable. And in that scope, and in that area, I want to tell someone the gospel. But usually it doesn't work. Because soul winning is difficult. It requires you to go out. Sometimes the weather isn't good. Sometimes the people aren't nice. But still we do it. Right? Because we get people saved. <clears throat> See, the thing is, Jeremiah 6, 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is a good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. There are Christians today who don't want to follow the traditional paths. They want to come up with something new. Right? They say, we don't want the old ways. We don't, for example, they say, we don't want preaching. You can't sit for an hour and listen to preaching. So what happened? They came up with a new way, PowerPoint, 20 minutes. And what is the result? There's no preaching of God's word. It's all wishy-washy, washed up, and creates a bunch of losers for Christians. We don't want congregational singing. We want rock music. We want something new. We want lights. We want smoke. We want disco. We don't want to open up our voices. We just want to hear some person in a mini skirt, some fag looking guy with a pink shirt on, with skinny tight jeans, with a guitar and singing, refiner's fire, you know? That's what Christians want today. We don't want to read the Bible. Christians today say that. You know, they say we will, but rather we will read daily meditations. You know, in words of men. They take a verse and they write, okay, your day, it's, it's like horoscope. Sometimes, you know. <clears throat> we don't want to pray. In Leipzig, where I'm from, in one of the guys from the home group, he came up with an idea called listening prayer. Listening prayer. He would, ga he would uh, appoint a day and said, we're all coming together and we'll read a verse from the Bible. We'll ask God to talk to us and we'll just stand still while God is speaking to us in our hearts. So there's a bunch of people sitting around just now. <laughs> Listening prayer, Buddhism. You know? See, this is the same thing. They don't want all these things that a Christian should necessarily do. And that affects, we don't want to go soul winning. We don't want to do how, how we do it. We want to come up with new, new ideas, track distribution. You don't find that in the Bible. You don't, you don't find people giving scrolls, you know? Yeah. Street preaching isn't biblical. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I've come across Germans who say, I, I, I don't want to do soul winning. I want to do street music. I want to stand in front of people there with a the guitar and sing a song, all, all these songs. In the, and I asked them, you know, you're not getting people saved that way. You need to tell them the gospel. Oh, wait, Paul and Silas, when they were in the prison, they sang, and the jailer wanted to know how to get saved. Sure, but are you in prison? Are you beaten now? Is there blood lashes on your back that people see you singing, and then you're like, okay, or somebody's like, okay, you're suffering. Some, no, you're, you're, you're having makeup on your face. You're pretty comfortable, you have your nice coat, and you're just singing with a guitar. And people are just walking by, 
And you know, but, uh, when people do street music, it is Christian songs, the only people who are interested is what? The same watered down Christians like you. Oh, that was a nice song. <clears throat> There was a, in England, there was this, uh, there was an idea called text a toasty. Basically, students in a particular campus, they write a question about like, uh, what is the meaning of life? How do you read the Bible or something like that? And they put, put, a, put it, they stick it somewhere on a wall with a phone number. And if somebody, some atheist guy stumbles upon that uh, pamphlet, you say, oh, maybe I want to know the answer for that question. I'm going to ring this person up. And the person who's Christian, he will invite him over for a toast. He will make omelette and bread. And they will discuss the, the, the answer to that question. And I'm like, what is this? You know, <laughs> I mean, you're going to have people whom you don't know come to your home. You have no idea who these guys are. Right, and uh, in Germany you have this group called the SMD. Uh, what, I don't know what it's, it stands for. Student, yeah, Missi Mission. Student Mission. And they came up with this idea called Discover German Culture. Right, in different cities. They go to the campus, they go to the students, and they invite them to a place where they all meet. And they just have, fill them up with Hillsong music, you know, some watered down shallow gospel. And the people are coming up with these weird ways that's not what biblical is. People are obsessed. People are obsessed with bringing people in and not going out. <clears throat> so the number one excuse, it is not my gift. I don't do it the way you do. They, won't, they don't want to stick to the old ways. They don't want to stick to the biblical ways. They want to do something new. And at the end of the day, the result is crap. They don't win souls. And even if uh, most of them are teaching, repent of your sins anyways, you know. The second excuse that I've heard from people. Hey, do you, do you go soul winning? Let's go soul winning. It's like, I, I already go soul winning. Oh, wow. Oh, what do you do? Uh, I try to witness to my colleagues. I try to witness to my neighbors. That's aiming pretty low. See, 90% of the time, people who say that, they don't do anything. Are you, are, you, are you telling me that during your work hours or sometime, you go to everybody and say, hey, uh, if you were to die today, are you, <laughs> you know for sure you're going to heaven. Is that the kind of, no, no, you know what they do? Let me tell you, this is what they do. Whenever they say, even if they're trying to reach somebody at their workplace, they target one person. They become their friends, really good friends. They go have beer together. They go have lunch together. And when that person is moving, they help them move their stuff, move their apartment. And one fine day, they'll say, hey, why don't you come to church? Let's go to church. And this person is brought into a position where he says, oh, this person has helped me a lot. He's such a good friend. She's such a good friend. Okay, let's go to church. And then they bring a colleague or a friend to church. And everybody's like, wow, you brought a colleague to church. You're such a great Christian. You know? And there are Christians today who believe that being a Christian automatically makes you a soul winner. They think that they just glow. Oh, my colleagues know that I read my Bible. My colleagues know that I go to church. So I'm being a witness there. Lifestyle evangelism. See, there are Christians who think that they are the most loving people in the whole world. The people will look at our love and they'll get saved. Because we are just so loving. Let me tell you, I've seen some of the most loving people in the world who are not saved. I used to be part of this group called the Leipzig Gospel Choir. Where I used to, there were like 40 people, we used to sing songs, gospel songs. And um, except for two or three people, everybody was atheists. We used to sing praise and worship songs. They were all atheists. They never believed in religion, nothing to do with God. They were just there for the music. And let me tell you, these guys were some of the most loving people I've ever seen. They're there for you. They help you out in your times of struggle. You know, and, these are the, and they're more loving than most Christians that I've ever come across. And they have nothing to do with Jesus. <clears throat> Sorry. See, the thing is, what the tip I would give is, some people are just afraid to talk to strangers. 
they don't want to talk to strangers christians who get saved and they're in this wrong kind of churches and once you tell them about soul winning they're like ah uh, you know i want to tell my colleagues first i want to tell my family people first but the thing is familiarity can be a enemy they know you they know how stupid you are they know all your mistakes you know and if you go and tell them the gospel then like you're telling me the gospel you're telling me how to go to heaven ha huh? you you know but the thing is when you go to talk to a stranger he doesn't know you he doesn't know what kind of an idiot you are he doesn't know what all mistakes that you have made and the thing is it it doesn't matter to him whom you are it, what matters to him is that a stranger has come to him and is concerned about his soul he wants to tell me the gospel and that's enough for a person to get saved he doesn't have to have a friendship a relationship with you in order to get saved a simple conversation can get you saved and the thing is it is it is also biblical to preach to strangers you know you experiment with them make sometimes make yourself a fool you know and when you know how to present the gospel sure you can go tell your colleagues it's i would never say don't tell you the gospel to your colleagues it's good tell your colleagues the gospel the bible says here in acts 5:42 and daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach jesus christ you know everybody is taking part it's not just one person's gift there is another excuse that's connected to this that i've heard from some people i do soul winning oh yeah what kind of soul winning i do it online i do it online i do online soul winning that's not soul winning okay they're trying to make posts instagram posts facebook posts youtube videos and they think they're trying to reach people there's nothing wrong with that okay it's good but the thing is it's important to do that in real life first see people should know that you mean what you say like for example i've heard people say oh well pastor anderson does a lot of ministry online he puts a lot of videos and so many people are getting saved but the thing is he also does a lot of work people know that he's a man of god who's qualified who's able to preach to a church and a lot of people attend his church because they're interested in what he has to say Amen. and that makes a difference people look at that and they say oh this person means he's, this person is serious and that has impact on people when you're really doing if you're a, if you're a soul winner if you're a real time soul winner you're going out on the streets getting people saved door to door and when you post soul winning tips people will take you seriously Amen. yes of course you know this guy's doing the work it must work practice first you know i'm so i'm not saying don't do stuff online it's good but practice it in real life first then you can take all this stuff online prove yourself study yourself uh, show yourself approved you know your work shows people will take you seriously when you do it in real life so number one excuse it's not my gift number two oh i do it uh, with my colleagues i try to witness to my colleagues i would try to witness to my um, i try to do it online and the number three excuse Sometimes I ask people, "Hey, let's go soul winning. Let's let's uh, tell the gospel." And this is the answer that people said. I don't like your pastor Steven Anderson. You know, soul winning has nothing. There are Christians. I have met Christians who think that the word soul winning was coined by Pastor Anderson. and i showed them from the bible proverbs 11:30 really it's in the bible what they think the word reprobate was coined by pastor anderson and i showed them the bible really i've been through the situations you know and there was this one time i uh, i went soul winning with this guy and before i went soul winning we prayed and i read a verse from the bible proverbs 11:30 he that winneth souls is wise and he didn't know that the word that the word existed in the bible he didn't know what to say he immediately said oh that's talking about jesus jesus is the soul winner <laughs> <laughs> jesus is the savior he's the one who died for you Amen. you know he has given us the ministry of reconciliation yeah. we win souls jesus also said as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world but he are the light of the world 
He's not the sole winner now. We are the sole winners. He's the one who saves. He's died for you. He's already given, he made the gift of eternal life available for you. We need to just go, enlighten people, tell them the gospel, say there's a gift. Jesus died for you. He can save you. He can give you eternal life. That's our job. Amen. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> See, if somebody says, I don't like your NIFB, I don't like your Pastor Anderson, whatever. I get it, okay? I, I, under, I understand that. But the thing is, you, you don't have to be an IFB to go soul winning. You can be saved. You can have a burden for people and go soul winning. We don't expect you who come here to be uh, post-trib, you know, to have the same stand on the reprobate doctrine. You may believe differently on these things, but if you are saved, you are trusting Jesus 100% and you have a burden for people, we are glad to take, soul, take you soul winning. You know? And let me be honest, okay? Whoever it is, if you're talking to some people, encourage them to get on the team. Hey, you know what? Get on the NIFB team. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's worth it. Because let me tell you, if you go to Google and type Zelen Gevinen, Soul winning Germany, we are the only group that you'll get. Sure. And if you type, okay, let's say you type evangelization, you'll probably get a lot of other, and I'm guarantee you that none of them teach eternal security. If you find one, let me know. It's always, there is, there is always something as Brother Alzheimer said this morning, yeah, it's a gift, but, but, there's always something, there's always some string attached to it. You know, if you are fired up for soul winning, if you want to get soul saved, you know, you, if, if you're doing it alone, okay, fine. But if you're trying to get involved with another group, you're just wasting your time. You, you better get on the NIFB team, wake some Himmel, the Zelen Gevinen team. Amen. You know, because we do it seriously. We take it seriously. We are calling out, you know, we are going into the highways and hedges. We are calling people, you come and get on the team. You know, it's not like there is a famine. There is, there is no famine in Germany when it comes to soul winning. There's a group here. There's a group. We pick cities. We have marathons. We go soul winning. We have a lot of material online. Okay? See, and let me tell you, people who are against NIFB, saved Christians, okay, who are against NIFB, they're just brainwashed. They're just brainwashed by the culture of this world. They are brainwashed by the trends of this world. They are brainwashed by the pastors of this world. You know, they, 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 they want to be politically correct. They are a feminine bunch. Right, so that's one excuse that I've heard commonly. Okay, and the fourth excuse. This is not an excuse actually, but this is something that's true. They say, well, hey, let's go soul winning. Will you come soul winning? I don't do it. I'm not the kind of player. I don't do soul winning, no. It's cheap. I've heard people tell me that. You know, it's great that you do it. I, I don't do it. I mean, they don't even say, it's not my gift, sorry. No, no. I don't do it. These are some of the most rotten people, you know. <clears throat> they, uh, when I was uh, new to Germany, I saw somebody in the church and uh, this person had a big bag. So I just asked, oh, whoa, you, you're carrying Bibles? Are you giving away Bibles to people? It's like trying to make, you know. She was like, ha, huh, good one, huh, good one. I don't do that. I'm not the kind of person who goes around giving Bibles to people. You know, there are, there are Christians today Save Christians, you know, their version of Christianity. This is what their Christianity is. They wake up on a Sunday morning, put makeup on their face, comb their hair, dress nicely, go to church, call their friends, hey, uh, reserve a place for me. I'm gonna be running a little five minutes late. And they go to church and they're like praising God, you know? And after church, okay, I'm gonna be with my buddies. We're gonna have lunch together. We're gonna have fellowship. You know, and then, okay, after that Sunday, the rest of the Sunday, you know, I need to go home, get my beauty sleep because I have to start working from morning. And sometime during the week, Wednesday or Friday, they go to their 
home group, their Bible study group, and they just sit in groups and they pray for their needs. Oh, I'm not. Uh, I'm having this headache. Pray for me. I'm. Uh, my neighbor is uh, neighbor's dog is uh, hospitalized. Pray for that. Um, ridiculous uh, things. I'm not getting this permission somewhere. Pray for this. It's all personal needs. Personal needs. Nothing to do with telling someone the gospel. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with soul winning. Nothing to do with learning the word of God. It's just carnal issues. That is their Christianity. The week is over, next Sunday, the same thing. And uh, I've even heard, uh, it sounds like what you do is uh, what Jehovah's Witnesses do. It sounds like what you do is mo was what Mormons do. I don't want to be part of that. Well, I would say that, yeah, these guys have uh, given a bad name to soul winning. And to be honest, sometimes I think there is, how to do soul winning is something like how to be organized in doing soul winning, something that you can learn from these guys, you know. Although these guys are preaching heresy, these guys are heretics, how they really organize and they train people to go door to door. It's surprising. And sometimes these kind of people, when, when we post something like, uh, you know, on hating, do not I hate them a lot, that hate thee. Second Chronicles 19.2, they immediately criticize you. Oh, you're so hateful. Oh, you're so judgmental. I have this one friend who said, I don't go soul winning. But every time I put some post condemning the homos or the false teachers, immediately she's sending 1 Corinthians 13. The whole chapter, WhatsApp. Uh, what is it? Oh, you're not loving. You're not showing charity. You know, the problem is these are the people who have no love for people. Yeah. They have no charity for the people. You know, and they criticize you when you're actually quoting God's word, when you're standing on God's word. <clears throat> so, you know, the problem is why people don't go soul winning. Predominantly, the problem is there is lack of leadership in churches. Lack of pastors who preach. They don't do soul winning themselves. Right? They don't, they don't do preaching the right kind of preaching that motivates people to go soul winning, right? It's Satan has successfully attacked so many Christians today, prevents them from going soul winning. Now, why do we need this sermon? What is the point of this sermon? Okay, you have listed some excuses. And you, must be, you must be sitting here and saying, Moses, um, we haven't made excuses. We have come here today. We have gone soul winning. Why, why do we need this? One thing, very important, don't make these excuses yourself in future. Amen. Amen. The thing about soul winning is being consistent. It's not about, oh, I went soul winning once. No. If you want to have success in your Christian life, you need to be a consistent soul winner. Regardless of how much sin is there in your life. We already spoke about this. The last sermon about people not going soul winning because of sin in life is a stupid reason why you should quit on soul winning. No, even if there is sin in your life, you go soul winning. Right? And whenever you're backsliding or if you're going through persecution, don't come up with excuses and say, oh, I found an excuse. Maybe I can pause soul winning. Don't ever do that. Okay? It will hurt you. Amen. And number two, this is very important. Okay? Turn with me to John chapter 13, Gospel of John. Keep your finger in Luke 14, where we were, and turn to John chapter 13. Okay, John chapter... 13, sorry, I think I'm in the wrong place. John chapter 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Okay? This, somebody used this verse against me. Okay? I told them, hey, effective discipleship. You are a disciple. You call yourself a disciple of Jesus. You need to go soul winning. And they pointed to this verse and said, no, that is not what the Bible says. It's when we love one another, that's when you're a disciple. 
Okay, now that, that can confuse, that can throw you in a loop sometimes. But I was like, I was read, reading Luke 14, then I found this. If any man come to me, Luke 14 verse 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. It says, if you want to be my disciple, you need to turn against all your loved ones. Okay, there's so many things. You say, if you're a disciple, carry the cross. See, of course, the thing is, let me ask you this. When you say that I love people, I have love for the unsafe people, what do you do about it? Soul winning. We go and tell them the gospel. Right? You don't get, of course, it's a good thing to give them food to homeless people, but the best that you can do to a poor person is tell them the gospel. You don't give them a fish, you teach them how to fish. You teach them the Bible, you teach them God's word, you get them saved, that's when that person so life will get better, right? Uh, let me ask you this again. So you said, okay, how, how do I show love to an unsaved person? By, give, by telling them the gospel, going soul winning. When I say that I love my brother, somebody who's a Christian, a brother and sister, when I say I love this, per love this person, what do you do about it? Take them soul winning. Take them soul winning. If I love my brother, I want him to succeed in his Christian life. I want him to have rewards. I want him, I want her to be happy, to be a happy Christian. And if I say, no, oh, I love my brother, I love my sister, I'll only bake a cake when that person is depressed. You know, every time that person is depressed, he'll ask for, ask for you to bake a cake. People take advantage of this kind of situations. You know, if I want, if I love my brother, if I love my sister, take them soul winning. Soul winning is the number one thing that we need to do. And, and if, if you know people in your life, okay, people whom you got them saved, or uh, maybe you're going to some church where you, you don't really know what their stance is on uh, the gospel. Maybe there are a few people who are saved. Take them soul winning. You know, and if they come up with excuses, which, is, which might be these excuses which I've laid down, try to talk them out of it. You know, show them the Bible and say, hey, it's not a gift for everybody. You know, uh, uh, sorry, but I, I mixed up my words. There's no such thing as a gift of soul winning, something that we need to do. So show them the Bible, spend time with them. Try to get them soul winning. And of course, if they are still like hesitant upon it, okay, what do you do? Stay, tell them once, tell them twice. You go soul winning. But if you are still in contact with a person, try to tell them, try to take them soul winning. We need to motivate people to go soul winning, push them to go soul winning, prompt them, rebuke them. Why? Because we love them. Not because we wanted, hey, you, you need to do it just the way I do it. No. We are doing it the way Jesus has told us. We are doing it the way the Bible tells us. And uh, we, 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 we just want to make sure that our friends have a part in it as well. Right? So that's, the, that's what I thought I would uh, share this uh, evening. Let's show our love for our brothers and sisters, even if those who are not here, by setting an example, by going soul winning and encouraging them also to go soul winning. Okay, so let's bow down our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you enabled us to go soul winning and that we were able to get people saved. So all these 10 people, oh Lord, whom we got saved today, yes, there are 10 more souls who have, added, have been added to your kingdom whom we're going to see in heaven. And we just pray, Lord, for their lives here on earth that they will read the Bible, that they'll hear the right preaching, that they'll have the right guidance, that they could also um, be soul winners themselves and they would have reward in heaven, that they will learn the Bible. And Lord, uh, especially pray, Lord, uh, about all, uh, for all the Christians who are making excuses, who are in these wrong kind of churches, who are in these dead churches, watered down churches, where nobody's going soul winning. And ask, Lord, that uh, 
predominantly that you open the eye, their eyes and Lord that they come in contact with soul winners O oh Lord that especially that they will look up in the internet or YouTube that they'll come across our videos and say okay there is a group here in Germany that goes soul winning and that they will take part O oh Lord that they will also be rewarded in heaven ask Lord that that Christians in Germany saved Christians who have trusted in you that they will open their eyes and they'll go soul winning. They'll get on our team, they'll get on this team and be successful and have rewards in heaven so that you be glorified, that your kingdom be extended in this nation. In Jesus' name, I offer this prayer. Amen. Amen.